I'm urging states and local jurisdictions to comply with these federal laws. All right, that was Attorney General Jeff Sessions reiterating the White House threat to sanctuary cities to comply with immigration laws or lose federal funding grants. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Adriano Espaillat of New York. He is a former undocumented immigrant from the Dominican Republic and the first former undocumented immigrant elected to Congress. Good morning, Congressman. Thank you, Allison. Good morning. Thank nice. you for inviting me once again. Nice to have you. So what do you think about Attorney General Jeff Sessions reiterating the policy that federal funding grants will be denied to cities that so-called sanctuary cities, such as New York? There are many others, obviously, around the country, um, because what the White House says is that these cities are not helping to enforce immigration laws. Well, this is a serious threat to the security of Americans uh, throughout the country, and particularly in New York City, which is uh, the largest, safest city in America. And we have been safe since 9-11 uh, because our men and women in law enforcement have been given the tools to fight uh, crime, to fight terrorism. Now, the Department of Justice is entrusted with the mission to defend us against enemies, both foreign and domestic. And by yanking funding away and clawing back funding away from law enforcement, we're putting uh, average Americans at risk. In fact, it's almost like putting a gun in the head of Americans and playing Russian roulette. This is egregious, and this is something that shouldn't happen. Our men and women or law enforcement should get all the help possible to defend us from any potential terrorist attack. But look, you know what the White House says. They say that these sanctuary cities are protecting people who broke the law and that you shouldn't be asking your local law enforcement to, if they see somebody who is undocumented and here illegally, they say, why wouldn't local law enforcement work with ICE agents to try to get rid of that person? What a sanctuary city does is, in fact, uh, allow a mom to take his, her kid to, to school without fearing that the principal is going to call ICE or a grandmother to go into the emergency room without fearing that the nurse is going to call ICE, or even uh, a domestic violence victim to be able to go to the local precinct and report that crime without thinking that the local commander is going to call ICE and deport them. Uh, this is actually uh, a fighting, a crime-fighting tool that I think we must uh, ensure that all people can come forward and report a crime as opposed to being fearful and living in the shadows and really uh, not cooperating with law enforcement at all. So this is uh, quite the contrary. And, and, and if uh, this particular measure is implemented, um, New York City will lose $52 million that are very, very important for the men and women uh, that fight uh, terrorism. The 62% of the, yeah. of the intelligence and counter-terrorist efforts will be compromised. And this is really uh, malpractice, if you may, uh, by the Department of Justice. I want to also ask you about something else coming out of the White House, and that is a request for basically a billion dollars, 999 million, to begin the construction of that long promised campaign promise from President Trump of the border wall. What's interesting is that that one billion dollar request covers only 62 miles of the proposed wall. What do you think of these numbers? These are numbers. This is money that could go towards education, towards health care. Uh, America needs help. Uh, the economy is still slumping a little bit. We need to make sure that people have jobs, that uh, our programs are well funded. And to build a wall is, is not going to resolve the, the immigration crisis. We must uh, work very hard to have bipartisan efforts to reach uh, immigration reform. And building a wall is not going to do it. In fact, you know, I remember when Ronald Reagan told Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Uh, why do we need to build a wall now? We should build bridges. And I think it's the wrong approach. Again, this administration has gone the wrong way. And we should be helping Americans and not hurting them. Well, look, let's face it. I mean, President Trump won. This is one of the first things that he promised. This resonated with a lot of his supporters and voters. Do you think that your Republican colleagues are inclined to grant? I mean, again, that's only 62 miles. If you multiply that times 25 uh, or however many miles you, you need to get to the 2,000 that he promised, then you're up to 25 billion. Do you think that Congress would ever approve that? 
I don't know if we have the funding to do that kind of uh, effort. Uh, what I do know is that President Trump is at, is at one of his lowest uh, levels of approval, uh, even though, you know, this resonated uh, with, with his base. But right now, he's tanking, and uh, he's got to do something for the American people. And I think building a wall doesn't help our society, doesn't help our country move forward. In fact, it divides us with the rest of, of the continent, the, head, the rest of the hemisphere. I would rather see him invest in education. I would rather see him mm -hmm. invest in health care, et cetera. Congressman Espaillat, thank you very much for your perspective. Nice thank to you, have Allison. you on Thank New you so Day. much. Chris. Thank you.